Daily Harmon video. I'm really tired. Uh, yeah, still haven't written my uh, reconsideration moment motion. I'm working on it, but I just don't even know what. I don't even know how to approach it. It's just so silly. I mean, someone just says something like, "You didn't, you know, whatever. Put your shirt on today." And you're like, "What the fuck are you talking about? This, my shirt's on. How do you think it got on? <laughs> you know? I mean, fuck." Uh, and so you have to explain to them, oh, well, look, okay, I mean, I got up at about 6.45, you know, a little bit early because I wasn't feeling too good. So then I went into my room and I found a shirt and I put the shirt over my head and pushed it down. And then I put my arms through the armhole. I mean, come on, it's just so silly. Um, but anyway, what are you going to do? I mean, that's the accusation. I'm, I'm, I'm being accused by someone who's supposed to have intelligence and understand the law and all this stuff that I haven't stated a claim when I've clearly stated a claim. Um, I pointed out that that guy over there did something that's against this law right here and I cited the two laws that are involved. I even quoted the entire law on libel and defamation. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, there's just, there's no, there's no need for any further clarification. So I've satisfied the short, no, uh, what does it say? What's the law say? <laughs> Damn it. Um, short, plain statement. Yeah, I've done the short, plain statement thing. And obviously the court is punishing me for it. And they don't want short, plain statements because there's really no penalty. You know, I mean, if, if, if I write 27 pages in my complaint, there's no penalty for it. I'll just waste a lot of court's time, um, waste paper, and for, for nothing. And so I, so I, even, I even looked up the um, Viacom... Um, complaint against YouTube and it was it was like 30 pages long and they just kept saying the same thing over and over and over again YouTube took our stuff see they took this here show and then they took this here show and they did this stuff and, and you know and they took it and they did it and they took it and they took this stuff and they took the stuff and then they played the stuff and then they had people that put the stuff online and they did let people put st and they just say it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and uh, I suppose that's the approach because then nobody can challenge it because they're not going to be one of they're not going to bother wanting to have to account for every single sentence or quotation they can pull out of a complaint. I suppose you, you know it just makes it that much of a burden. So I mean, it's just that the idea of a short, plain statement, 27 pages, is not anything near my definition of a short, plain statement. But if the court's going to punish you for being brief, then I guess there's no incentive to be brief. I mean, so um, I guess that part of the law will change just because of irresponsible courts like this one um, who abolish the concept of being brief and concise and to the point and direct. Um, so anyway, it's just so bizarre because I mean, if we read her decision, you know, it's all these five pages, but the five pages are all about the history of this case, and it's not even an accurate history written by the court. <clears throat> and there's only two or three sentences where she's actually referencing my complaint and whatever it is that it lacks, and she just claims it's it doesn't plead a claim. Well, I mean, of course it does plead a claim, so I, I I'm just going to have to. Um, elaborate on the key words in the complaint and so the idea will be is that yeah you just okay she apparently doesn't think I possess a copyright to my content so I'll have to cite the law and cite why videos on YouTube are copyrightable and then I'll have to explain <laughs> um, I don't know yeah because you really can't argue case law in complaints well, like it's not really that you're arguing but you really shouldn't cite it but I guess that's all there is to do so I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, and there's no penalty for doing it, so I guess I might as well. Um, but it's just, it's stupid. It's just imbecilic, because it's just, the court's just using this as a catch. It's just, they might as well just call it catch-22. Um, you know, rule 12, subsection, whatever, 6, is just, they might as well just redefine it as catch-22, uh, because they can turn it into anything. And she even converted the motions into anything. I mean, the, the the notes on Rule 12 explicitly state that the the common practice is to convert dismissal motions into summary judgment motions because this the mo a motion for summary judgment is a higher standard 
you actually have to demonstrate that there's no plausible claim or, or, or possibility that there's any cause of action. And uh, it requires a little bit more from somebody making the claim that there's no claim. And that's the traditional approach. And she did exactly the opposite. She took which were invalid summary judgment motions and decided to convert them all into a motion to dismiss, which is just nonsense. So, I mean, it's backward process. And there's a lot of backward process. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, there's courts that have said this is something you don't want to touch. This is like, um, <laughs> you know, the third rail of jurisprudence. Prudence, you do not. They don't survive on appeal. They have a terrible record. There's all these admonitions that you don't mess with these fucking motions unless it's damn clear. And um, she's ignoring all that because she knows it's a big giant harassment that I'm going to now have to go to a superior, you know, the appeals court. I'm going to have to kill another year. Um, I guess she doesn't see any real consequence in that if I win, what that's going to mean. I mean, the fact that two judges in the same vintage uh, would have to be overturned on one case, that's going to be ugly. And maybe that's why. Maybe she thinks that there's no way the appeals court is going to do that because then they're going to be stuck having to accept that they're, you know, that the Fifth Circuit is, is, a, is, a, is a shitty circuit, that the judges are incompetent and incapable. Because that's what they're basically going to be doing. They're basically going to be signing their own... Uh, you know, the, the, a statement defining their own incompetence. Because these are judges that are part of the circuit, so, I mean, this is going to make them all look bad, too. So there might be some will to say, well, let's just let this one slide, because we don't, we don't want this precedent of uh, having to explain how the same case got dismissed by two judges without even a fact being heard. I mean, that's just, you know, that's the kind of thing you just don't let happen. Well, anyway, we'll see. We'll see. It's, uh, you know, but yeah, I just don't even know what approach to take. It seems quite obvious that all I have to do is put the magic words in my motion for reconsideration. And those words would be, um, I would like to amend my complaint. And if I put those words in it, then she'll have to deal with it. Uh, maybe she can still dismiss it, but she'll have to deal with it. She'll have to actually explain or make some kind of more elaborate argument than you're not you, 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 you didn't put a shirt on <laughs> you know I mean anyway yeah, it's just idiotic yeah that's all you can say I mean everything she says is just refutable but you know I mean she says that I admit that um, I didn't properly serve the other defendants and it's just there's just quotes from me. I mean, you just mind them. Or <laughs> I point out clearly that I did serve process and that they broke the law to avoid that process. And, you know, there's, there's nothing you can say there. And the motion to recuse, like I said, she didn't answer a single argument in that motion. She didn't explain away anything. She just said, no. Uh, no. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, but that, you know, judges get away with that too, which is really bad. And, and they're getting away with it more and more now where they don't have to write a decision. Even appeals courts are being allowed to do that. They're allowed to just say no. And they don't have to explain why they're saying no. They just get to say no. And that's, you might as well just burn the courthouses down when they won't even write a decision. When they don't even have the integrity to write a decision. <laughs> yeah. No. No, no good. So anyway, enough of a video. Might have to speed it up. I don't know how much time I wasted on this one. But anyway, so I will do something relevant to insulting fat ass some other way in the future. But for now, we'll just do this little bit of legal crap. And uh, whatever. Nah, whatever. All right, quick add-on. Uh, yeah, there's the, the original website I set up for this court case, you know, these documents are all on it. And so Jones Orr did file this, this motion that was really a mess. And, and it was just a mess. <laughs> and so I did respond to it. And then he got his second shot at it. And that's sort of what, that's another part of summary judgment is that, you know, the guy who initiates the motion, he gets the first shot. 
you get to respond and then he gets the second shot and that's part of the burden of proof you know is that you're getting two chances to prove your argument and uh, what comes with that is the burden just like at a real trial the prosecutor gets the two shots and the burden is that the prosecutor has to prove the case because he's getting that extra shot you know even in closing argument and uh, you know and that's the burden but you know, anyway so this was Jones's response to my response which was really just as it was just a piece of shit so I'll post a link to that anyway that's all <laughs>